Hey everybody, what's up? This is Crypto Cody, and I'm so excited to do another video for you guys. Guys, if you could do me a huge favor, please like, subscribe, comment, hit the bell notification. That would mean the world to me. In today's video, I'm pleased to announce that I have an awesome guest by the name of Rachel Siegel, who is an entrepreneur as well as a crypto educator. So let's sit back and enjoy the awesome, awesome insight that she has in the crypto space. I'm super excited to have Rachel Siegel on the call today. For those of you who don't know her, she has a YouTube channel and on multiple other platforms called Crypto Finally. She's an entrepreneur, crypto enthusiast, and crypto educator. She's an entertainer and a musician. And uh, she's been featured on multiple platforms such as the uh, Fox Business, MTV, The Next Web, Bloomberg, etc. The list goes on and on and on. So Rachel, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really excited to have you. I appreciate it. Yes. So, um, yeah, all of that are, all of those things are true things. Um, <laughs> thanks for having me on. Of course, of course. So I always like to start off on the show with um, just a fun question. And I believe you're, in, just really quick, you're in New York right now. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes, so it's about as cold over there as it is up here in Maine, I would assume. It's it's not very fun over here right now. Yeah. There's a little bit of sun today, which is good, but it's, it's freezing. Yes. Yes. I can only imagine. Oh my word. It's crazy. We had negative 13 a couple of days ago. Insane. That's way colder. I think it's way uh, less cold than that in New York, but it's oh. still pretty cold. Yeah. Oh, ridiculous. So out of all the places that you've been, what is your most favorite place that you, that you could say that you've been or would love to go back to? Um, I like all the different places for different reasons. I think that I have a good community out in Florida. Um, so my co-host Tim from uh, my live streams that I do and stuff like that, he lives out in Florida and uh, I know a lot of people out there from crypto, which makes it really fun. Um, and then if I had to be like by myself, honestly, maybe Vegas, uh, <laughs> <just> <laughs> nice. because, because I, I mean, I used to, um, I used to do a lot of traveling by myself and I, I would make really good friends. Um, I made this really good group of girlfriends, um, out in Vegas that I went to go visit out in Florida and I just, I love community. Um, and I love community in different places. That's brilliant. So I, yeah, I talk about that kind of thing a lot, but honestly, I, I just like to see from, from different hubs, um, and I think it's something really cool. So Yeah, that's super awesome. And uh, I mean, you seem like such a fun, bubbly person to hang out with too, so super cool. <laughs> um, so now, how did you get involved in the crypto space? Can I get a little bit of your story and how that all started? Yeah, so... Um, Wow. Okay. So I come from a mainstream production background and I have friends who also worked in production out in LA who came to visit in New York um, during consensus of 2018. And they basically just invited me out to some of the networking parties. Um, we didn't think much about it, but I really got a good handle on the community um, and sort of understanding where people were at. And I learned a lot about uh, this technology. I, I got the idea, you know, that we really were on the ground floor of something big um and that it seemed like a like a dumb idea not to get involved um so on, <laughs> honestly right after that i started working with that channel um we made educational blockchain content and then a few months later spun off crypto finally yeah that's awesome and uh, with crypto finally i mean obviously i want to encourage my viewers to check out your channel you're on youtube you also have a viber vid uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave um in the description below all of your links for all the different places people can find you um but you're very unique in the sense that you do a lot of music videos um you're a yeah. musician but but it's really you, i think you're a one of a kind person very original i mean you take all of these songs and then recreate them. And some songs are original and you recreate them and make them all about crypto. So, I mean, can you kind of just like talk a little bit about that? What, where's your inspiration come from? Um, so initially, uh, that was the way that I started off with crypto finally was with those music videos. Um, yeah, yeah. I thought it would be a fun way, uh, to get involved in the cryptocurrency community and also offer something sort of new, um, in the sense of entertainment created specifically for the crypto community, but also entertainment that can be accessible to people who are outside of it. Um, so something fun. Uh, I have always written songs. Um, I have a background in writing. Um, my, my genre used to be rotten boys, but that market is incredibly oversaturated. <laughs> yeah. um, so there wasn't a big, there wasn't a big future in writing uh, theatrical songs about rotten boys. Um, and I thought to myself, what's something different and new that I can do? Um, I've honestly like always enjoyed parody. I've always enjoyed parody. Um, yeah. And there were several young women who were really sort of coming out in a spotlight making parody videos. Um, 
over the last like 10 or so years, I mean, like people who really started on YouTube and then I would find them later on. Um, and like no one on this is going to have any idea what I'm talking about, but uh, Garfunkel and Oates, um, okay. yeah, who yeah. started on YouTube, they were playing. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know Garfunkel. You don't know. Yeah. No, and, and what? Garfunkel and Oates? You don't know what I'm talking about. No, I it's guess I don't. I'm girls. thinking of Garfunkel. Oh, okay, okay. It's these, exactly. It's yeah, these yeah. two girls who make parody songs. Um, and they started out on YouTube. And it's super, super cool just to watch their transformation over time. Um, they started playing ukuleles on their couch in these little webcam wow. videos wow. like this. Wow. And then they grew and grew. And um, and their stuff is really funny, really amazing. Rachel Bloom started the same way with a couple YouTube videos. Um, now she has a show on Netflix called My Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, my point being that there was a lot of really cool stuff going on in that genre and very few women who had gotten themselves involved. Right. So yeah. when I entered this educational blockchain niche, I was making these uh, strictly educational videos with this other channel. And then I started thinking about the way that I've been involved in sort of that parody community and that songwriting community. Um, right. I, I've, I've always written stuff like that as well. I have like past plays and <laughs> all this stuff. But <laughs> um, And I combined them at that end. So anyway, that was a really long answer. Uh, no, that's sort of fine. Question, that's great. But, no, you, it's, um, that's, the stage is yours. Yeah. Well. <laughs> oh, you've also started a, um, a, a thing called Finally Friday. Yes. Yeah. And can you just kind of talk a little bit about what that's, what that's all about too as well? Um, so Finally Fridays, uh, we live stream twice a week on Fridays right now. Um, we're looking to add some more stuff to the roster, including some virtual reality fun. Oh, but basically, awesome. um, it's more or less a talk, uh, a talk show uh, where we sit down and we talk to the community. Uh, we answer questions. We recap on the past week in crypto, give sort of updates yeah. on community events, um, stuff that's going on uh, in the news. Um, and products that we think are cool, decentralized content platforms that we nice. use, uh, basically just keeping it pretty real. Um, we don't do technical analysis. We don't do charting. Um, we're trying to bring something, I think, more user-friendly to the space, um, as well as provide an outlet for people who do have questions. Um, you know, as, as a larger account on Twitter, um, and I'm sure a lot of people can vouch for this, we get maybe hundreds of DMs. Yeah. Like just <laughs> all the time my dms are out of control wow. but a lot of them are people genuinely asking questions about cryptocurrency asking wow. questions about hardware wallets um really important ones and you can't always get to them so yeah. we are trying to provide an outlet where we can talk one-on-one -on -one. um so that's that's more or less the basis of it but also just bringing the idea of cryptocurrency to a mainstream level um how can people access yeah. this from the outside that's brilliant. And, you know, I mean, honestly, Rachel, I mean, I've, I've seen a bunch of videos of yours on the education side of cryptocurrency and you truly are brilliant with it. I mean, you, you know what you're talking about. Um, and it's been really, it's been awesome to see those, a lot of questions that need to be answered in this space. But what's the hardest thing about being in the crypto space for yourself? I would say the hardest thing. It's funny. I, I just did an article um, with Cointelegraph. I, they came out, I believe, two yeah. days ago, and I answered a similar question, like the toughest challenge. Um, yeah. I think it's really the perce the perception of what it means to be in cryptocurrency. Right. Um, there are lots of new faces that are popping up right now. Um, there are going to be more new faces, uh, and they won't all be what we have traditionally sensed uh, people in blockchain and cryptocurrency to be. You know, I'm not a developer. Um, I am not a miner. I'm not a trader. I'm not doing technical analysis or charting on YouTube. Um, so it's sort of a different format than people are used to in the past. Um, and the real reason for this is that the community itself is growing um, yeah. and adapting and new formats are going to start. But I think it's just the initial perception and the learning curve uh, because this is such a new space, because there's not been a lot of stuff very similar to this right. in the past, exactly. that people are having trouble understanding it. Um, not to mention that a lot of what I do, you know, while targeted towards the crypto community, absolutely everything I do is about crypto and blockchain. Um, is also, you know, opening the space for people outside. So a lot of people within the community itself have have trouble understanding that. Um, and a really right. good example would be uh, MTV, the MTV episode that I was on. A lot of people in the community said things like, who watches MTV? Everyone's forgotten about MTV. Um, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. That is what's cool about it. That the people on crypto Twitter don't watch it. Somebody else is watching it. Um, right, and right. that's a lot of the feedback that I get about myself is why are you doing this? This isn't the space for this. And, and what I've been trying to say over and over and have been yeah. misled and mistaken um, <laughs> is that there is space for everything here and there should be. And if you're talking about something like global adoption, we just, 
frankly, cannot all be traders and developers. Right. Of course. Of course not. Yeah. I mean, it's, and the majority <laughs> will always be consumers anyways. But I mean, mm -hmm. it's important. I, th I mean, you know, it's, you're an entrepreneur. I mean, it's hard. You got like being in this kind of a space, you're in the very, very beginning stages. Would you agree with me mm -hmm. on that? Mm -hmm. And with that being uh, said, I mean, we're going through all of the hate. I mean, you and I both, I, I, get, I get my hate. I'm sure you get your hate, but I mean, you can't, you're not doing anything in life unless you have haters, right? I mean, that's just what it comes down to. And I wonder if people are kind of scared too at the same time with what we're doing. Um, I think that it's uh, uncomfortable and not familiar to them, uh, to be honest. I think that when crypto first sort of popped off in a big media light, there was a lot of people being like, hey, but I found it first. Um, and cryptocurrency at the end of the day is just not a grunge band. It's not something yeah. cool and that you hold over your friends' heads. Um, <laughs> you really do need to get people involved. And like, it's awesome that people who co comment in, like I've been mining since 2010, like, but it's not awesome when they follow it up by, I must know more about this than anybody ever. Oh, yeah. Because the fact of the matter is the people who are going to know the most about cryptocurrency probably aren't born yet. Um, Excellent point. For you, Excellent point. Yeah. But <laughs> they're probably not here yet and they will come and they will take that throne. So the question becomes, what are you doing to positively contribute to the space? Um, right. What are you doing on your own end? And, um, and, and how, how does that affect what's going on as opposed to just sort of putting out the idea that something that's happening is negative? Um, what can you actually bring that's positive? Yeah. No, uh, I, and, you know, that's true about all aspects of life. It just like yeah. people seem to have not learned it on a personal level yet. Right. No, and, and listen, hey, I agree with you 100%. I think it's exciting to me. I'm excited to see all the uh, Generation Z people that are kind of becoming out and expanding in the space. Um, so let's go back to the MTV thing. So obviously, uh, really exciting. You're on MTV. Um, you're helping educate people uh, w with that platform. Is that correct? Or what exactly did you talk about? What was the goal for being on that platform? I appeared on an episode of their new series called uh, True Life Crime, which is a remake of the MTV series True Life. Nice. And it is an investigative docu-series. Uh, they did an episode where they covered a $5 million SIM swap hack where $5 million in cryptocurrency was taken. Um, it's a super interesting story that I think our community would actually get a lot from um you know if they did a little more research into it but um i was on there basically to talk a little bit more about crypto they they chopped up what i had to say you know i only ended up speaking for like maybe 30 seconds on the episode but they did include um you know images of my twitter profile they did include a segment of my keynote um that's pinned on my youtube nice. they included a piece of that where i talk about how bitcoin's getting in the media and how people are starting to look at it and invest they give statistics like how many people are invested in bitcoin so so right. they really did talk a lot about cryptocurrency in that episode. Um, and it's available on MTV.com um, or, you know, you can watch it on whatever MTV platforms you have. <laughs> That's awesome. Super cool. Yeah. Um, so now let, let's kind of dive into cryptocurrency a little bit. All right. Um, so obviously Bitcoin, it, you know, when people hear cryptocurrency, I actually would, I would actually say that the general public, your basic mom and pops probably know the word Bitcoin before they know what cryptocurrency means. You know what I mean? Like they've yeah. heard of Bitcoin before that. So Bitcoin is obviously the mass word. That's the thing that everybody knows. Um, and it's also the king of all the cryptocurrencies out there. If you go on the, uh, if you go on the coin market capitalization, you'll see that it's over 60% dominant in the market. Do you think that it will always remain king of all the altcoins or what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that it's the original protocol and there's something to be said for that. Mm. Um, so I don't really know about the statement of king of all the altcoins because it, it, it's so funny. We're, we're making all this stuff up like in terms of like statements like that as we go along in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's not to say that I don't think that Bitcoin is probably the best. Um, sure. <laughs> because, no, no, yeah. you know, more, more or less that, that is my opinion. Um, it's, it's but, like, like dominance in the market is more so what I'm saying. Like it, right now it's like over 60% dominance in the market. I mean, do you think that other altcoins are probably going to surpass the dominance that Bitcoin is currently holding over them? I think that if there is a reasonable mass distributed and mass used use case, um, it's possible, you know, it's, I, I believe yeah. that. However, um, I, again, some being the original protocol, there's really something to be said for that. Um, 
you know, uh, take into consideration something like email. Um, email, the, the kind of email that we use to this day is the original email protocol. Now, there have been advances to that in the past. There are um, emails where you can now see uh, a confirmation if somebody's read it, um, you know, or, or something, you know, things that make it a, more accessible, but none of that has actually caught on. We're still doing right, the same right. old exact thing, um, which was the original protocol because that's what we got used to. Um, now, you know, we're 11 years in and Bitcoin's still in its early phases. Um, right. And this is when people are starting to get excited about other things. But when you look at that vast difference, what you said, 60%, like <laughs> that's, that's really big. That's a really big number to catch up to. Um, right, right. Uh, especially when the word Bitcoin really is the buzzword. Um, you're right about that. The word cryptocurrency isn't the buzzword. Bitcoin is the buzzword. Um, and branding and marketing really will play into this as well. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Now, obviously, there's another, you know, in the crypto world, there's been a lot of talk about mass adoption. And, um, you know, I, I think it's exciting when you hear people talk about that. But do you think that we're even there? Or what does that look like to you? <laughs> I don't think we're there. Um, I don't know what it looks like to me, to be completely honest. Uh, like, <laughs> it's, it's either going to be that big media really starts talking about it all the time and it adopts in a similar way to a Venmo or PayPal, the way everybody knows about it and everybody uses it. Um, just the fact of the matter is like everybody has downloaded one of those apps or cash app or one of those things at some point in their life. Um, <laughs> it either starts off with an adoption phase like that, where we understand that it's an easy way to transact and send money to each other. Um, yeah, yeah. Or it adopts in a way that, you know, blockchain and Bitcoin are being used sort of under the table in ways that maybe the mass consumers don't necessarily understand, mm, but are still yeah. utilizing. Yeah. Um, so all of these things are possible, but regardless, I think that it happens further out. Um, I think that media and, and references and portrayals and perception of media, I think that it happens over time in a certain way. And I think it happens on purpose. Um, and yeah, I think that yeah. we're seeing a lot more right now because I think that big media and big banks really do foresee something happening. Not now, but maybe three years down the line, five years down the line. Sure. Um, yeah. They get in early. Uh, and that's important to remember too, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. So in other words, it's, you're kind of saying like mass adoption almost looks like we're starting to distribute it in a actual currency format. Yeah, I think that it, I think that it needs to be accessible in a sort of bigger way. Um, and I think that it will be in a certain point in time and like anecdotal stuff. Like, you know what happened with the Simpsons this last week? Oh my goodness. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely phenomenal, but we're the community that's talking about it because it was about us. Right. Um, right, right. You know, they do something like that, not a week before a bull run, not a month before, not, the, you know, not like shortly before there starts being institutional investors. Um, they do that three years prior. Anyway, that's like a really conspiracy-esque way to take this. But my point being, I, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And I think that it's going to really rely on mainstream outlets if it's going to have to do with awareness of adoption. Yeah, of course. I mean, actually, it's interesting, too, because the Simpsons have coincidentally predicted quite a bit of things. Well, the Simpsons, um, and which I find fascinating, is the Simpsons have talked about cryptocurrency. Uh, they've been talking about it for the last six years in several different episodes since, I believe, 2014, around wow. the same time of the Big Bang era. Um, I'm saying the Big Bang Theory era. Um, yeah. <laughs> and... And I've talked about this, I actually spoke about this um, when I give a historical sort of look at the space. Uh, but what's interesting is the way the community had outpouring for the Simpsons episode, everyone's so excited, the Simpsons are going to mean something. Um, and sort of the negative light that was taken on the MTV episode because people didn't understand where it came from and they don't participate yeah. in it. Uh, and sort of rings true to what I've said in the past is that we are seeing media portrayals, but many of them really are targeting the demographic that exists within the space. Like, yes, the Simpsons yeah. thing is really, really cool, but the kind of people, no offense, um, <laughs> who watch The Simpsons are the kind of people who are already involved in cryptocurrency. Yeah, uh, the yeah. people who watch MTV are not. So yes, it's awesome, but they've done it before. They've been doing it consistently. It definitely gets more people involved, but it's more of the same kind of people. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's a takeaway from this as well that I don't think a lot of people are considering. Oh, uh, no, that's, that's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, okay, cool. So now... Um, Obviously, decentralization is probably one of the larger reasonings for creating Bitcoin um, initially. And, um, you know, just to take people away, from, you know, not to take them away, but to give them the option to not have to be stuck on these centralized platforms. Um, I know that, you know, 
uh, we both share a different platform on the Viber vid, uh, platform. It's just cause different people be getting strikes on YouTube. Um, so you know, it's, it's in this, what does decentralization mean to you? And not necessarily in that format I just mentioned, but just like, what does decentralization mean to you? And why do you think it's important for the world? Or do you even think the world is ready for it? I know that's like a bunch of questions in one. So <laughs> uh, I think decentralization more or less just means sort of, uh, having your own control of your own stakes and things. Um, yeah, and yeah. that can be across the board. That can be on something like a content platform like YouTube, um, owning your own videos, owning the copyrights to your own videos, having it be sure. yours and proven that it's yours, um, <laughs> as well as freedom of speech um, and uh, lack of censorship. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of tech censorship. That's what people believe is going on with the YouTube bans. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I will, I will say, that I believe um, something that's being a little bit overlooked. A lot of these creators are posting their videos as flagged, but I've noticed that several of them have really, really um, uh, hopi hopium sort of like <laughs> titles. You know, like these titles will be in all capital mar like all capitals, like Bitcoin going to the moon, uh, Bitcoin going to zero, something like that. And right, right, right. And right. I think that that that's a dangerous thing to put out there. Um, I said it time to people. Again. Yeah, I think it's dangerous to do things like that on a general level. So I understand why YouTube's doing it. But should they have the right to do it? Yes, they have the right to do whatever they want. Right. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, that was sort of a side note on the YouTube thing. But I do really, really believe um, in decentralized content platforms um, as a great use case uh, for everyday people to get involved. Um, and I am on several of them. I just got on Vibervid recently uh, nice. because a lot of people have been telling me about it and how much they enjoy it, their bounty programs um, and the monetization angle. So I got on maybe like four days ago, but as far as video and content creation platforms that are decentralized, I'm also on 3Speak, DTube, uh, BitChute, uh, BitTubers, and Library. So I really nice. am across the board, um, and I think it's important to be. I think it's important to bring your content to these platforms. Of course. And like I said earlier in, uh, in this episode, I, I want to make sure that all of those links are down in the description for you. So um, now, okay, so let's move on to blockchain then. So obviously, blockchain technology is a pretty secure way to go about many things. Um, but how do you think it's better for society and, and like to kind of give people a better idea as to what could blockchain do for society that's almost better than what we currently have now? Um, so general use cases, you know, uh, just like anti-fraud, um, you know, ownership yeah, rights, yeah. just being able to catch up on things, um, proving, you know, just general truth um, <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, world. No, that's good. I, I, I think, you know, Honesty. across the board, and there's so many different industries that you can involve it in as well. But I think that the over the overarching topic um, would be just the ability to track um, and understand things that have happened, you know, keep a catalog. Right. Um, so I, I think that we're seeing a lot of really good use cases, but I would just say that with, and, and honestly, this has been my opinion on it overall about blockchain adopting, um, whatever is going to have the, the best user interface, um, whatever is going to be easiest for a person to get involved in and not have to worry too much about the technological aspects, that's yeah. going to be something that's going to take off. Oh, totally. No, and that makes sense. And I know that it's, it, it is so important. I, I love what you said about the, just the honesty piece. I mean, it seems like we've had a lot of dishonesty or a lot of questioning and conspiracy on different things that have been dis even simplicity, uh, the simplicity of the, the whole voting system, you know, this mm -hmm. is crazy. You know, I feel like, you know, things like that is probably what you might be referring to, but, um, yeah, yeah. no, that's awesome. That um, okay. and anything, you know, like that's, that's, what's kind of magic about blockchain is it works for anything. Um, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely voting in elections. But I, I mean, I was really just, I get overwhelmed by questions like that because you really can use it for absolutely anything. You can use it for uh, health professions. Um, you know, you can use it for medical records. You can use it for supply chain. You could like that's brilliant. Um, distributing right. things, uh, tracking things, but just like generally keeping people honest would be basically the overarching. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and I don't you mean said to... it in a kinder way. Saying keeping people honest is a much more diplomatic way than saying yes. stopping fraud. Um, well, no. But listen, and and I don't mean to overwhelm you. It's just I ask because I don't think people understand how important blockchain technology actually is and what it can actually do to better our society. I, 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 I think it's phenomenal. And, um, but okay, so let me go to a fun question. All right. I, I have something fun to ask you. Um, you know, I was on your uh, Instagram and I came across this picture. I was wondering what is going on in this picture? Oh, it's the mini 
minions at Christmas time. That's a funny one. I'm in, uh, I'm at Harry Potter World or, or Disney or where, Universal, wherever Harry Potter World was in Christmas of, God, that must have been 27, 2016, maybe. Nice. Um, <laughs> Gearing up for the bull run. You tell the minions about the bull run that's about to happen. <laughs> that's exactly, is, is there a timestamp on that? I posted that. I don't know. I'd have to go it. back. I just took a snapshot anyway, of it. So. Well, no, anyway. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, that's me hanging out with the minions. I went to Harry Potter World. So that's a fun one because I love Harry Potter. That's a new, that's a new place, right? I haven't been to uh, anywhere in Florida. I haven't been. There's no, it's in California. Seven. California. Oh, it's Disney. California. Disneyland. Yeah. Ah, I Universal. Gotcha. Okay. Universal. Universal. I didn't Universal. know there was one in. Okay. That's awesome. I'll have to check it out. They have a Harry Potter world and their Harry Potter world is sick. It's super sick. Um, <laughs> it has to be. It's Harry Potter. It. <laughs> it was sick. <laughs> That's brilliant. All right. So um, I only have a couple more questions. Do you have a little bit more time? Yeah. Okay, brilliant. All right. So this is another fun kind of question. Um, and I know it's probably not even that relevant, but it's just fun to kind of think about. Um, so who do you think Satoshi Nakamoto is? There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of questions about that. I know that Hal Finney is like a front runner on it. Um, also, yeah. what, what was that guy's name? The guy who like appeared in the footnotes of the, uh, the Kleinman trial? Um, I'm honestly not sure. It's so random. Um, he, his like his like pseudonym was Salatoshi or something like that. Like his huh. name was like anyway, and that one's dumb. But I just love the internet conspiracy of it. I love that it's going yeah. on right now. You know, um, <laughs> but awesome. this happened recently. So in the in the there was a, the Kleinman trial um, that happened. I don't know, this was maybe six months ago now. Um, there was a court record that was released that had a footnote of an original collaborator, and this guy was like this super smart programmy guy. Anyway, I'm not telling the story properly and I never do, but um, <laughs> that's a really interesting one. And if you literally just like look it up, like look up Satoshi Nakamoto Kleinman trial Solitoshi or something like that, you'll see the whole thing. It's really interesting to look into this guy is like another one of these Reddit poster type people. Um, but he was that's like, awesome. he was a big crime Lord in the real world. Um, had a lot of like gang ties and like drug cartel type business going on, but people thought that it was possible. Um, <laughs> Finney gets a lot of front runner. I think to be completely honest, if nobody knows at this point, it's probably because nobody knows at this point. Right, right. Um, by the time you start pointing fingers at a lot of people is by the time that the guy who did it, like, you know, has gotten away with it too. Right, um, right. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I, on no, no point in time have I ever thought it was like uh, Craig Wright, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. And that's an interesting thing too. Cause I mean, I actually did an interview with uh, John McAfee not too long ago and he was saying that, you know, he he believes Craig Wright was a part of the process of of creating it, but what do you think of Jorg Malt? I don't know. I I don't know. <laughs> I, I, hey, you know what? I recently put out a funny video about my daughter being Satoshi Nakamoto. So I mean, that's I I just don't even really play into it too much because I have no idea. I you know at one point I was actually wondering if it was AI technology. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but or the government. Or the government. Honestly, I think the government is probably one of the best arguments. Why not? Runner. You know? This video has been deleted from YouTube. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, no, I mean, yeah, this, it's, it's, whether it's an individual, a group of people, I mean, I think it actually is pretty brilliant of them to, you know, be very, you know, autonomous about it all. So, yeah. But cool. All right. Well, hey, I got one last question for you. Um, this has been so much fun, by the way. Um, so what is the best advice that you can give all of um, my viewers uh, and it can be, you know, crypto related, but also maybe some, what's your best advice you can give us in general? Oh, wow. Just like in life, crypto yeah. related, um, crypto related, uh, hold strong. If you believe in it, that's awesome. Don't put all your money into low market cap gems because someone promised you there would be a moon. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, that's what I'd say. Uh, dollar cost average in life related, um, be cool, turn off the internet sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's about it. Be cool, turn off the internet sometimes. Um, and, uh, be, just be diligent when it comes to investing in cryptocurrency. Um, a lot of people say do your own research, which I find not to be very helpful because that just includes going and looking at more YouTubers who will also tell you to do your own research because we are such a new technology, um, especially if you don't understand the charts or something yourself. Like if you can't really do your own research, you can't do your own research. So just be careful, invest slowly um, and hold, don't sell when everything goes down in red. Believe it to be a long-term investment if you're not a trader. 
um, and and don't like invest all of your money into something that's got like twelve dollars in liquidity uh, just because someone told you it was cool. Right. Oh, that's brilliant. Hey, well, Rachel Siegel of Crypto Finally, thank you so much for being a part of the show. I really appreciate having you on. And um, and uh, I, like I said, I'm going to make sure I get all your links and descriptions in below. And I hope that everyone that is following me follows you because you are just a cool cat. So thank you so much for being on. Thank you.